Welcome, Pio fans, to the Shoe Sports Report. I'm Anthony Saccone. And I'm Ryan Tui. Sacred Heart Sports had a busy week, and we are going to get you all caught up on what happens. Well, that they did, Ryan. Why don't you start this show off with some men's golf? Well, Anthony, the men's golf team hit the links this past weekend as they traveled to Simsbury, Connecticut. The men's golf team had an outstanding performance as they competed at the Ryan T. Lee Collegiate. The Pioneers won the tournament, defeating 12 other teams, which included the likes of Wagner, Yale, Holy Cross, and Fairfield. The team shot 9 over par with 585 strokes on the scorecard, 9 points ahead of Bryan and St. Peter's. Sophomore Saptak Talwar once again shined as he took first in the individual standings at 1 under par on his second playoff hole. He finished the tournament with 143 points. Junior Alex Manor also had a terrific tournament as he finished in a tie for fifth place individually, going two over par with 146 points. First year golfer Jake Sullivan and Nathan Kim both finished in ninth place along with five other golfers. They went four over par with 148 points. The Pioneers look to carry this momentum into their next tournament, which is the Hartford Hawks invite at Bullsbridge Golf Club in South Kent, Connecticut. That tournament will take place from Monday, September 17th to Tuesday, September 18th. We'll keep the show going with some women's cross country. Women's cross country competed at the Nasty Invitational this past Saturday, where they put together a very solid performance, finishing in fourth place out of 12 teams. It was the upperclassmen leading the charge as junior Jacqueline Thorne and senior Tara Conley came in 14th and 15th, respectively. Senior Emma Carey and junior Olivia Wise both finished the top 30 of 99 finishers for Sacred Heart. Next up, the Pios have a match on September 22nd at the Ted Owen Invitational, hosted by CCSU. After the break, we have our very own Gino Ganello with the women's volleyball head coach to get us caught up on their season and the upcoming Hampton Inn by Hilton Shelton Invitational. Welcome back to the Shoe Sports Report. I'm Gino Ganello, and for today's Coach's Corner, we have women's volleyball head coach Rob Machen in coming down with us. Thanks for coming down, Coach. My pleasure. Well, let's get right into things. You guys have uh, had a pretty good start so far, had mm -hmm. some solid wins against Quinnipiac and Hartford. What have you seen from this team so far compared to last year's team? Uh, it, it's a good group of athletes this year. We have an interesting mix, some young players in the skill positions, our Seder and Libero, both freshmen. Um, both very talented and do very well. Um, good upperclassmen coming back, kind of getting that mix and getting comfortable is kind of what the goal is to begin the season. We've had some good fighting hard wins um, and looking forward to the rest of the season going forward. Yeah, Coach, and, and you guys have gotten off to a, a good start and now with the Shoe Hampton by Hilton Shelton Invitational coming mm -hmm. up uh, here with your first home games this weekend. What can we expect as the fans uh, from this team as they come out for these home games? An exciting group. I mean, we have stretches where it is just outstanding and some learning stretches too. So we're going to see a lot of very physical, aggressive play. Um, and I think, like I said, stretches up some of the best I've seen since I've been here. It's just putting those stretches longer together. That's kind of what the goal is, but it should be a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, absolutely. You guys are always a fun team to watch, always come down for the games. And now, you know, they were ranked, your team was ranked in the middle of the pack sure. for the NEC in the preseason polls yeah. this year. What can we expect and in NEC play, which starts next week. Uh, the NEC is a very strong volleyball conference, which makes every week a lot of fun. Top to bottom, everybody's very, very good. But the flip side is anybody can win any night. So really it's gonna come down to making plays at the end of the set. And every game we play, we're in every match. Um, so is the opponent, but I like our chances this year. I think we're a very strong team and can do some good things this year. Well, you know, like you, guys, like you said, I think you guys are gonna have a great season. Um, you know, always fun to watch as always. Um, and. and you know, always a, always a good match. So, Coach, that's all the time we have for you here. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming down. And from all of us here at the Shoe Sports Report, uh, we wish you guys the best of luck this season. Thanks for having me. Well, be sure to come out for this year's first home action when the women's volleyball team hosts Binghamton, NJIT, and Rhode Island for the Shoe Hampton Inn by Hilton Shelton Invitational. The first match for the Pios is set for tomorrow night at the Pitt Center as they square off against NJIT with first serve at 6 p.m. After the break, we will have more shoe sports action coming your way.
We're back and we are going to round out the show starting with some shoe field hockey. That's right, Anthony. The women's field hockey team has been on a tear recently and this weekend had its fair share of excitement. After traveling to different locations for their first five games of the season, the women's field hockey team returned to Yale University's Johnson Field this past weekend for two home games. They first hosted 21st ranked Albany on Saturday afternoon. The Pioneers struggled to keep the ball out of their defensive zone all game long as the Great Danes outshot them on the day 28-8. Albany would eventually go on to take the game 5-1. The next day, Secret Heart would host Villanova. The Wildcats struck first in the first half on a goal. Still trailing Nova by one in the second half, Sacred Heart finally got on the board at the 38-17 mark as junior midfield forward Kelsey Hopkins scored on a pass from sophomore midfielder Emily Alexis. That notched things up at one. The game remained tied for more than 20 minutes. That was until Shu's first-year midfielder Kayla Cruck found the back of the net as she scored following a pass from junior midfield forward McKenna Crawford, giving the Pioneers a 2-1 lead and eventual victory. The field hockey team is now 5-2 on the year and look to add three more W's to the record this upcoming weekend. Tomorrow, they travel up to New Hampshire to take on Dartmouth at 4 p.m. On Sunday, they return to Yale to host UMass Lowell, and then on Tuesday, they will host Hofstra. Field hockey is having quite the impressive turnaround this season. Another team that is starting off strong early in their schedule is Sacred Heart Football. Sacred Heart had a big task on hand for their Week 2 matchup against Bucknell this past weekend. And what a day it was for Shoe Football, who hit the road this past Saturday to take on a Bucknell team they barely lost to in last year's contest. Sacred Heart picked up right where they left off from Week 1 as they dominated Bucknell 30-14 to improve their record to 2-0 on the young season. In the first quarter, Shoe drove right down the field, where senior running back Jordan Meacham capped off the drive with a 30-yard touchdown. Bucknell would answer back and take the lead in the second quarter after rushing for a touchdown and taking an interception to the house for a pick six. But right before the end of the second half, Duke led the charge as he found senior Andrew O'Neill for a 40-yard reception that would set Sacred Heart up from the Bison five-yard line. On third down, Duke would find sophomore Nathan Balthazar for the touchdown as both teams went into halftime tied. The second half was all Sacred Heart as they wasted no time and came right out of the break and scored on the opening possession. Running back Jordan Meacham had two monster runs which led to a 10-yard Duke rushing touchdown. Sacred Heart's defense was absolutely stifling in the second half. Senior Kevin Sears snagged an interception in the fourth quarter while Sacred Heart sacked the Bison quarterback three times and the final sack came from sophomore defensive tackle Noel Hajazi. Boy, do we love it when big men score touchdowns, and that is exactly what Hajazi did. His sack in the final seconds of the game turned into a strip sack touchdown as he took the fumble 32 yards to the house. Football is in their bye week this week, but they look to improve to 3-0 next weekend as they travel to Staten Island, New York to face off against NEC foe Wagner. Kickoff for that game is set for 6 p.m. What a way to end a football game. Shoe football seems to be running on all cylinders. You know what? Pio fans could not have asked for a better ending. We'll move from the football field now to the soccer pitch as we have Chris Cayozo standing by with an update on Sacred Heart Soccer. On a gloomy Wednesday afternoon, the Sacred Heart soccer teams travel down to St. Peter's University to take on the Peacocks. The women's team cut their goal differential in half by winning 6 to nothing. Their goal differential went from 16-2 to 16-8 to to and gave head coach Matt Micros his first Sacred Heart career win and his first Division I career win. Lindsey Corello scored two goals for the Pioneers, leading them to this outstanding victory. On the men's side, they unfortunately lost 2-1 to to St. Peter's. In the first half, the Pioneers came out hot with a goal from sophomore Alejandro Arribas. In the second half, St. Peter's were knocking a goal and that would force overtime. There were no goals in the first overtime, but in the second overtime in the 107th minute, St. Peter's were knocked in a goal, finishing the game by a score of 2-1. to one. For the Shoe Sports Report, I'm Chris Cayozo. And we also have some other big news coming out of the Northeast Conference. Quite the exciting moment in NEC history as a new team will be joining the Northeast Conference as a core member. The Merrimack Warriors will be joining the Division I ranks and will see NEC action in 21 of 23 NEC sports as early as the 2019-20 season. With schedules already created in advance for sports like football and basketball, Merrimack can still compete for NEC titles in NCAA non-automatic qualifier sports like cross country and swimming and diving. The addition is the first since 2012 when Bryant was brought into the conference. 
from all of us here at Sacred Heart University. We just want to extend a big congratulations on stepping up to the D1 level and joining the Northeast Conference. Always great to have additional competition come in and join the NEC. And another big story coming out of the NEC is the Northeast Conference is reinstating field hockey beginning in 2019. Field hockey was last in the NEC in 2012. That really is such a huge announcement. And with all that being said, we'll end the show on that high note. But be sure to tune in next week for more Sacred Heart Sports. From all of us here at the Shoe Sports Report, I'm Anthony Saccone. And I'm Ryan Tui. Thanks for watching.